This video will show you some additional features that you can use when you're processing net structures in Topos Pro. So we've spoken a few times about Voronoi Dirichlet polyhedra when you're building your net-based structures, but sometimes you actually want to display these. So you can actually do this within Isochrist in Topos Pro. So here I have urea, which we processed in the tutorial videos. I've just shown one single isolated molecule just to simplify this a little bit. So it's pretty easy to show your Voronoi polyhedra in Isochrist. You just have to select the atom that you want to generate the Voronoi polyhedra for. So I'll select this central carbon here, and I'll press this button here, which will generate a Voronoi polyhedron. So this is just for the carbon in the center. You can see there's a large face between the carbon and the nitrogen and the carbon and the oxygen, because those are all really close together. And by default, the Voronoi is calculated between this point, which is the carbon, and all other points in the system. So there are some faces here and here, which correspond to neighboring crystal molecules. So I turn on my van der Waals and hydrogen bonding interactions and grow it long enough, you'll be able to see that there's some neighboring species in that direction. So you've got this hydrogen here and you've got this other hydrogen up here. You can modify this behavior so if I remove this Voronoi polyhedron, all the options related to Voronoi polyhedra are in this isochrist options here. So if you switch on polyhedron sublattice, you can choose the atoms that you want to calculate your Voronoi polyhedra between. So let's say, for example, I only wanted to look at carbon to other carbons in the system. I've turned on polyhedron sublattice, so if I choose carbon again, same as last time, and I press calculate Voronoi Dirichlet polyhedron, you can see it's automatically chosen just carbon, and if I wanted, I could add the other elements by right-clicking and saying select, but I'll just do carbon. So you can see the shape is very different to last time. In fact, this is actually the shape you get when you use the molecular centroid, because carbon to carbon, those are your molecular centroids. So in the next part of the video, when we look at the dummy atoms at the center, we'll actually get the same shape here. But we can modify the display of this Voronoi polyhedra further in the Isochrist Options tab. So here I can choose to show vertices and edges. I can choose to make the faces clear and I can change the opacity of the faces. So I'll make the face clear. You can see now it's disappeared. So if I change these faces back to fill and I press translucent, you can see you can start to see through these faces and you can see the molecule at the center. So I'm just gonna remove them again. You're not just limited to selecting one atom at a time, you can select the entire molecule. So here I'll select everything. I'll calculate my VDP. I'll select everything as well. You can see we've got a much more complicated Voronoi here because it's calculating all the individual atomic Voronoi. So this is what Topos Pro is actually calculating when you run the auto CN algorithm, for example, domains or solid angles. So each of these atomic VDP are being calculated between the atom and all the neighboring atoms in the unit cell. And then they're being combined together to give one overall molecular Voronoi polyhedron. So if I hide the vertices and edges, and I'll make the faces not translucent anymore, you can see this quite complicated polyhedron that it's generated here. So these faces here are what you control when you change your minimum omega in your auto CN. So the smallest face that's considered as an interaction. And then when you're looking at your molecule to molecule connections, these faces are summed together to give you an overall solid angle for a molecule to molecule interaction. So now I've switched over to a calculated simplified net for urea. I'm gonna add the Voronoi Dirichlet polyhedron for the central species. I just need to select one of those. I'll calculate it. You can see here I haven't switched the default option off, so I need to turn on my polyhedron sublattice. And then I need to delete this Voronoi. And then I can run it again. And select only the dummy atoms. And that gives me the Voronoi Dirichlet polyhedron for the dummy atoms in the system, so the centroid of each molecule. You can see it looks exactly the same as the carbon to carbon Voronoi polyhedron that we saw previously. So combining this with tools like the Edit Bonds tool, you can get some quite nice looking images. So for example, if I selected all the dummy atoms except the central dummy atom, I can tidy this up a little bit. So I'll select all of these. So 
select the final one at the back here. And then I can say edit bond and I can make those bonds invisible. So now we've just got the bonds originating from the central dummy atom to the neighboring dummy atoms. Now let's tidy it up a little bit. If we wanted, we could hide these bonds entirely by selecting all of them, edit bond, making them invisible. So then we can just use the Voronoi faces to denote these strong interactions between these centroids. You can also get some interesting information from your Voronoi polyhedron by selecting the atoms that define the Voronoi polyhedron and then pressing calculate selected atoms. So this here will give you some information about the volume and the surface area of the Voronoi polyhedron, which might be useful to use in calculations later. So I hope that's shown you how to generate some nice images with Voronoi Dirichlet polyhedra in Topos Pro. These polyhedra are powerful tools for showing relative interaction strengths within the crystal structure. Remember that these strengths don't necessarily correlate with strengths of free energies of crystallization, but they're a good first approximation nonetheless.